Indiana muzzleloader season, baby. In the next series of videos, we're gonna be hunting Indiana after Keith and I's little failure there in New York. We decided to pull the plug. We've been talking about doing Indiana muzzleloaders since the end of last season, and this is my first time in Indiana. Last year, Aaron, Greg, and Ted came down here during the public land challenge, and when that was going on, Jake and I were in Iowa, so we didn't get a chance to experience any of this stuff. But big hill country, a lot of timber in this area, probably pretty relatable to a lot of people in the country that hunt hill country or big timber. I'm excited about it because Jake, Ted, and Nick are coming to meet us today. When it's dark at four o'clock, it's gonna be nice to have people to hang out with and goof off with and Nick to cook his food. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie to you. That's been coming to mind. But they're gonna be hunting with us, so we're gonna be able to mix in a little bit of group hunting. We got some new ideas and theories that we're gonna try out, but for right now, we're just gonna start covering as much ground as possible. I think that's gonna be the goal in general. Again, not knowing this area. There's a lot of benefits to moving around, trying to learn more about it, because with no reference as to what the deer are gonna be doing based off the habitat or terrain, we just gotta get that baseline. That way we can bump our odds up as the week goes on. But today, the goal is to take this trail out, drop down and start going up and over ridges and try to get a scale for what these hills actually look like. It's pretty exciting though. I like having this big country to work through. Today specifically, we got wet leaf conditions. Breeze is picking up a little bit and it's clear. If we cover as much ground as possible, we're likely gonna bump into something. I can't promise it's always gonna be the most perfect outcome. It might be one running away. There's a lot of benefits to sitting in a spot, but we don't know enough about this area to commit to anything. So let's get started and let's hunt. White oaks are all around us, and there's a feeding sign under this one, fresh. I talked to Doug at Walmart yesterday, and he was telling me that they're feeding on acorns in this area a lot. Checking out that feeding sign, and then relating to what trees here around. There's a lot of tracks in here already. We're going on a side hill. The wind is coming over like this, and our strategy is just gonna peek over these ridges. down from that ridge we could hear it take off right and it just came all the way to us i'm assuming it hurt us kind of acted like it because it came right up here looking probably just keep moving this way the winds i guess more or less drifted that way
causing a buck trailing, but all I saw was doe everywhere. I did. Doe was on. That was crazy. I saw a flash, and then I just heard immediately like shh, 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 I was like, oh, it's running. And I was just waiting to get eyes on it. And all of a sudden, I'm like, no, that's walking towards us. And now we've got everybody woke up. Oh, yeah. You gotta get away from this stupid squirrel. Wait, there's more. <laughs> Ridge, keep moving. If we cut fresh buck sign, we might adjust, but we'll probably move a little bit faster here for a minute now. We got wind now too, so that be helpful for our uh, moves. Not helpful for hearing them because when you can hear them, it's nice. But just keep playing the game of moving with wind, stopping without.
think this bed that Keith is standing in was the bed of a young buck. The wind's not very good. So we're playing it super aggressive and it's super open and pretty flat on this bench. We don't have a lot of terrain to work with, but we're basically circling where we want to target next and we're just not even in the stuff that we think is all that good. There's a lot of deer in here. It's pretty crazy. I haven't hunted hills with this many deer in it and I'm having so much fun. <laughs> deer on the skyline. I thought it was all does. And we got up here and I could hear deer. And I looked down there and I saw one that was a buck. And he went up and across. And he was just walking and all of a sudden I think something got a whiff of us. They kind of scurried up the hill. And I saw a bigger buck down here. So to cut the distance I just hopped up on this log. And I could tell he didn't know what was up. I had a couple openings on that other side of the hill. We definitely had an opportunity. I was just zooming my scope in and out. And like there was a couple times where I was like, I'd shoot that. It's just the same deal we've been doing all day, which is making our way on these side hills, trying to stick to the shadow. I've never had so much success seeing deer. I mean, it's been insane. It's like the dream day, really. It's been insane. We're just gonna walk back to the truck and get some water, a little bit of food, and maybe move the truck. We've done, it's seven or eight miles now, somewhere between those two. And we're on the trail, and we just bumped a couple deer right here. Interesting tactic, just took off, like ran like 20 yards. I actually got eyes on them down there, so it was worth it. I don't know that I would've been able to get a shot, but if they stop in the right place and you're moving when they're moving, you might be able to pull it off. It's worth being aggressive like that. I don't know, 
I'm having a blast. And we've seen, I mean, 25 deer today. <laughs> into a different spot. There's this trail that goes down in here. It's the bottom. We're gonna take that a little bit and then we're gonna cut back up and start to side hill in. We're gonna try to get back in there a ways. Definitely been people coming through here, but been bucks coming through here too. Just wanted to try something different. There's definitely deer at that other spot. There's a bunch of land around there, but sometimes it's nice just to go back, check out something different. We got about an hour and a half left, so just gotta keep being aggressive and keep moving. any big ones, but there was one small one at least. We were coming down the trail and we bumped three deer, I think. One was for sure a buck. It was small. I don't know what the other two were. They're right here on the trail. <laughs> I think we're just gonna keep going with what we're doing. We're about to have an official wrap on day one. This is the most fun that I've had hunting without shooting one in a while. Just saw tons of deer today. I bet we saw 30 deer today. This evening we came into this other spot. We just moved quick through here and jumped three deer and came up on this ridge and walked right up on a mature doe feeding. And then we heard other deer, but we never saw them. We're just gonna keep doing what we're doing though, covering ground until we find something that's really obvious that there's a lot of bucks living in it and bucks around we just got to keep moving the rest of the guys i think are coming tonight either way we're gonna be hunting with the group tomorrow it's gonna be fun so before we wrap up this video i wanted to explain what my goals were for this indiana trip and what i was trying to learn on this hunt Hunting this area of Indiana was very similar to a lot of other places in the country. And for the last several seasons now, I've gained a ton of experience hunting in big woods, hill country settings in multiple states. These areas are very different than the majority of the places that I grew up deer hunting or hunted when I lived in Iowa. Because of this, I've had to relearn and adjust my own style to be effective hunting monotonous open timber. And at this point, it's no secret that I enjoy being extremely mobile and aggressive. So, when my friends and I first started taking the style to the timber, we had a lot of experiences where we would pick a spot on the map that we thought deer would bed based off of wind, terrain, and diversity. And a lot of times, it seemed like we were getting that right, but the problem was, because we were always so focused on getting as close as we possibly could to that bedding area, we would often approach from the top of the ridge and push too far into that bedding area and bump deer. Over the last few years, this has been a consistent pattern to our unsuccessful hunts, and at first it was comical. We'd come back to camp and say things like, yeah, we bumped another one, or yeah, we heard one run off the ridge, and eventually that started to just drive me crazy because I could tell we were doing something wrong, but I couldn't necessarily pinpoint what. So this off season, when I was scouting with Ben and Keith, I really made that the main focus of the scouting mission, was to try to figure out what we were doing wrong to try to prevent it from happening so often. And based off of scouting new areas with a fresh perspective and breaking down successful hunts, we started to notice a trend. Almost every successful hunt that we've had in this type of terrain, we approached the target bedding area from the side hill rather than the top of the ridge. So a few examples of this would be in 2020 when Ben shot a buck with his bow by still hunting down a bench where he thought deer would be bedded or cruising. 
He and Keith eventually ran into exactly that when a big eight point came cruising down the ridge after they did a calling sequence. That same year during gun season, Ben and I picked a spot on the map, went straight to it, and bumped the buck off of that target bedding area. Based off the fact that he wasn't bumped hard and where he went, we guessed where he would go next to bed and we spent the rest of the day circling around that spot to get the wind in our favor. Eventually, we set up on a finger that paralleled the one that we thought he would be on, and about 30 minutes before dark, he fed his way from his bedding ridge to the one that we were set up on, and we got a shot at him at about 40 yards. Looking back on that hunt now, had we approached that same setup from the top of the ridge, the buck would have likely hurt us or saw us before we even got set up. Later that month, Warb shot a big buck in Georgia by still hunting up and over finger ridges that were on the side of a mountain. While he was doing that, a rut frenzy blew past him, and instead of waiting for them to come back or moping and giving up on the whole hunt, he got aggressive and followed the deer, continuing to move slow as he approached the top of the next finger and glassing ahead. Eventually, he spotted the buck with the doe and got the buck. And last year, during our annual group muzzleloader hunt, I shot a buck as a driver, wrapping around the nose of a finger ridge and sneaking right into the bowl where I thought deer might be bedded. By doing that, I snuck within 70 yards of a bachelor group of bucks that had no idea I was there. By going back and watching the full video, you'll obviously see some more detail of what makes each one of these hunts unique and situational, but there's one thing that's consistent as we approached them from the side of the hill or the mountain. After seeing this trend on the successful hunts, it became obvious that there was a similar trend for unsuccessful hunts where we bumped deer out of the target bedding area. Almost every time this happened, we were approaching the targeted bedding area from the top or the bottom. When looking for footage to show what I'm talking about, I found a whole bunch of footage of me walking right down the top of the ridge, and now I realize how easily I was being skylined when I was doing that. Obviously, we've had success coming in from the side hill, but I can't say that I necessarily understood exactly why that was working or how to use it in different situations. If you want to hear more details of our thought process, my friend Larry and I recorded a podcast talking about this theory, and you can find a link to the podcast in the description of this video, and the specific episode that I'm talking about is episode number 234. It wasn't really until Keith and I went to New York that I started realizing why the side hill approach was working a little bit better. So. When we headed to Indiana, I had a goal in mind to try to learn as much about this specific approach as possible. Covering ground allowed us to test this theory and a lot of different terrain features. We still definitely bumped deer, but I wanted to compare what we could get away with using the side hill approach versus approaching from the top or the bottom. That way, we could use that information in future hunts, whether we were hunting with a bow, hunting solo with a gun, or hunting with a group during gun season. What I learned was that when approaching from the side hill, we were able to get much closer to deer before bumping them. A lot of times, deer didn't even know we were there. Even when we did bump deer, I didn't let that concern me because I found that bumping deer doesn't always mean the hunt's over. It seems when you approach a bedding area at the right elevation, the deer have a harder time seeing you. But when you're on the top, you're much more likely to get spotted on the skyline. If you're approaching from the bottom, where deer are better above you, overlooking that bottom, usually they spot you pretty easily there as well. Also, when you bump deer from a side hill approach, as long as they don't smell you, they usually stop to try to figure out what they heard or saw that made them initially stand up out of their bed. So, when you're gun hunting, you may still get an opportunity for a good shot, even if the deer is starting to spook. Also, by hunting super aggressively and spooking deer, I was also constantly taking note of how deer escaped, which I plan to use when we're group hunting later this season. So I guess the goal for Indiana was not necessarily killing a buck, but trying to learn as much as we possibly could for future hunts in similar habitat and terrain. I hope to continue to learn how and when to use this tactic in different situations, and I feel it's important to say that this isn't the only way to do things, and it may not apply to you if you enjoy a different style of hunting. I just often hear things like, you have to do this to be successful in this area, or you can't do that if you want to have success in this area, and I just think that really the beauty of hunting is, is you can make it whatever you want it to be. So find a style that works for you and is something that you enjoy and continue to learn and have fun. By sharing why we approached this hunt so aggressively and what we learned by doing so, I hope that it inspires other hunters to continue to learn, adjust their style, and think outside of the box. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. We'll catch you on the next one.